I promised you a little discussion about kidney disease because I'm hoping that anyone who's listening who has chronic dis kidney disease, CKD, or anyone who knows someone who has CKD will write this down and take it to their doctor because I'm not, this is one of those big discrepancies between the published peer-reviewed literature and what people are actually doing. The surprise is that animal protein causes kidney disease. And you could talk about a lot of different mechanisms. It's mostly, it's not you know, just plaque or cholesterol, it's saturated fat, um, uh, but it's also uh, the type of amino acids that are, that are prevalent in animal protein. The kidneys cannot handle it. Uh, it causes acidosis, which the kidneys have to try to deal with. And the bottom line is that the more plant protein you eat, the less kidney disease you get. That was extended into the whole idea of dialysis, that is ESRD, which is end-stage renal disease. Going on dialysis is uniquely related to eating animals in a dose-dependent manner. The more red meat you eat, not just heart failure, not just stroke and, and heart attack, the more kidney disease you, you get. Uh, and the most important thing you could do is stop eating red meat. Why? It's the TMAO. It, it turns out that we talked about heart failure. We talked about uh, heart attack, stroke, and death. Well, it's also kidney disease that increases when you increase your um, exposure to trimethylamine and oxide. And so uh, best thing you could do is plant protein, watch your TMAO level go down, and your CKD will actually stabilize or improve. That was published four years ago, still largely ignored by uh, nephrologists, that is the kidney doctors, and largely ignored by internal medicine doctors. Um, they do, they all know about it at the uh, University of Louisville. And uh, there's another couple places uh, where they focus on it. But it's just, we have pockets instead of blankets, uh, which we really need with this issue. Plant-based diet to manage the risk and complication of chronic kidney disease. This is nature reviews in nephrology. It's not some, you know, editor of some rogue vegan journal. That's me okay. uh, talking. This is this is in peer reviewed literature in the kidney doctors area um, as showing that plant-based diets are, are safe. And the best thing you can do to avoid all of the complications of kidney disease is to do a plant based diet. Now, among the um, uh, plant proteins, you could probably have done this with anything. And I would love to talk to the investigators and say, hey, why don't you go back and do, you know, beans, grains, nuts, seeds, uh, not just soy. Uh, soy is great. But if this what it probably is addition by subtraction. That is, they use soy protein instead of animal protein. And this is the result. People with stage three to four, three B to four, that are soon going to be on dialysis, it all stops and starts to get better. And you get to look at all of the metabolic consequences, everything getting better when you eat plants instead of animal protein. So this is the plea from the National Kidney Foundation that I just don't see a lot of uh, folks, please do a screen capture, send it to your doctor, send it to anybody with any kidney disease that you know that plant-based diet will improve your kidney health. And even if you're on dialysis, uh, if you did it in a search engine, you see one of the um, uh, kidney disease folks who are pushing uh, plant-based nutrition is Davida, which is the biggest uh, dialysis group in, in the country. And why would they push it for dialysis patients? Because there's less uh, acidosis, the BUN creatinine, all the bad complications of kidney disease, they are going to be lower every time the person comes in from di for dialysis, less poisons in their bloodstream if they're uh, doing a plant-based diet. That means they can get their full fee for two hours of dialysis instead of three and a half or four. So it's cash money for them. So uh, it took me a while to figure out why is Davida talking about plant-based diets? Then you realize it's uh, just simple e economics. There aren't enough dialysis chairs and why build another facility 
if you could just convince convince your dialysis patients to go plant based until they get their their uh, uh, transplant, and then definitely be on a plant based diet to protect that transplant. Okay. My next tangent is about COVID. Hopefully, we won't have to talk about this too much longer. But I hope everyone remembers the lessons that you know we didn't hear from um, Anthony Fauci. The only person who uh, I heard talking about improving your diet to improve your outcome was Charles Barkley on ESPN, believe it or not. Um, not sure how he made that observation, but it was very clear to us in the plant-based world that we weren't getting as sick and not getting as often um, uh, uh, with COVID. And, and so the data was very clear that if you were doing a plant-based diet, you would see a dramatic reduction in moderate to severe uh, COVID and if you were doing the opposite, that is a um, a keto diet with a lot of animal protein, you would see a dramatic increase in the amount of COVID illness. Microbiome is going to determine whether or not you have the cytokine storm uh, that people would get and that would make them so ill. So again, plant-based diet and, you know, sure, COVID was terrible, but there will be and there are continue to be other illnesses that are going to respond to what's in the GI tract, you want your microbiome to have lower amounts of inflammation and um, uh, and keep you healthier. This was a surprise, I have to say, um, published earlier uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I was stunned to find out that plant-based diets actually decrease the incidence of uh, COVID by about 40%. And so this is something that hopefully everyone will remember. I mean, we'd all heard that, you know, the vegans don't get the flu, the vegans, you know, seem to be doing better with a variety of illnesses, but a 40% reduction in COVID is something that I hope everyone puts in the back of their mind for the next pandemic, which will be here in five to 10 years, uh, just like the Obama administration had predicted um, and uh, put together that, uh, um, uh, epidemic group that was uh, dismantled, unfortunately, uh, before COVID. All right. Uh, my last section is to talk about what it is that we should be eating. I was pleased to be on this committee to try to do more prevention, get more um, uh, prevention into mainstream cardiovascular disease. And the ACC, AHA, American College of Cardiology, and American Heart Association guideline process is what it's like our Bible and cardiology. So I would think that people are going to read this document and implement it for their patients. And what it says in section 3.1 is vegetables, fruit, legumes, nuts, whole grains, and fish. And yeah, you say, now, wait a minute. And I did take a lot of flack from my vegan colleagues when uh, they knew that I had authored this section said, how did fish get into a document that you wrote? And the answer was, is the American Heart Association. If you look on their website, you will see, or if you know anything about AHA, it's a stroke organization as well. And one of their major journals is stroke. And the improvement in stroke that I showed you about 15 slides ago that happens when you go to fish from red meat is real. And so fish swam their way into my guidelines. Okay, fine. Uh, but I got them back by making sure that they uh, signed off on reducing, and reducing means really eliminating uh, cholesterol and sodium, and reducing cholesterol uh, to the ultimate would mean no more fish. But getting rid of saturated fat is really important. I know there are people who like saturated fat, vegetable-based, uh, and yes, it is true that coconut oil, palm oil, don't have the really long chain um, saturated fat that animal proteins, uh, animal saturated fat does, but the studies have shown that they still increase your LDL cholesterol, just not as much as animal uh, based saturated fat. So we should be avoiding them uh, whenever we can. So why is that important? Because there are several vegan products that actually have saturated fat in them. Uh, every curry has saturated fat and refined carbohydrates. And we wonder why our uh, um, South Asian colleagues who are largely vegetarian with some ghee, sure that's saturated fat, but uh, the coconut curry, in, mm -hmm. coconut milk and cream in the curry and the white rice uh, put people at risk uh, tremendously. 
but um, maybe not to the extent of processed meat, but it's, it's out there. Sugar sweetened beverages are a major issue. And whenever there's uh, a movement afloat to try to remove them from uh, diet or tax them, uh, there's a lot of pushback, but the data is very clear that sweetened beverages um, artificially and sugar sweetened beverages increase mortality. And so I encourage you, if you want more on it, to, to look up the guidelines, section 3.1. There's an entire discussion of each of these five. Uh, the fifth one I didn't have to spend a lot of words on because just about the time that this was being published was when the United States joined uh, Denmark, uh, Canada, and Switzerland in banning uh, the public sale, in, like in restaurants, of trans fats. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that as much as we did before. Mm -hmm.